Okay. Hello, Kimberly. How you doing? Um, welcome to DES 470, week one, night two. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go over the assessment, which is a quiz. Going to um, take a look at the assignment for the week, and I'm going to show you some work that I did on a, an assignment very similar to this with the purpose of hopefully giving you some ideas as to what you could possibly do for this. But before I do that, what I did for you was right here uh, in the announcements, I created a couple of new links for you and they are about different types of advertising methods and uh, unrealistic things from commercials that I think you'll find helpful. What I'm going to do is I've also got it on this document here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to open up the different types of advertising methods. We're going to start with this. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down my uh, video. And what we're going to do is talk about media types because it's part of what you have to do in your discussion is talk about media types. So um, what I want you to first understand is that let's say, for instance, if you, if you choose to go in and take a look at this link and use this link for some of your research, um, note that I've got you one that basically could be used uh, as a, um, uh, you could use this as a, um, a reference. Um, you have a date on here, you have a uh, pr producer, you have a, a title, and the balance is the uh, periodical, or actually, I believe it's more correctly a, um, uh, a what is it, a, uh, I think it's a Behance site, that's what it is. Okay, so different types of advertising methods and media. Major media tactics used in modern advertising to reach consumers. Advertising has evolved into a vastly complex form of communication with literally thousands of different ways for business to get a message to the consumer. Today's advertiser has a vast array of choices at his or her disposal. The internet alone provides many of these with the advent of branded viral videos, banners, advertorials, sponsored websites, branded chat rooms, and so much more. So the first thing to understand is that there is an evolution taking place. And at, at one time, print media was king. Print media was, was and is largely more expensive than this online array of choices that they talk about here. Uh, yes, there's production costs, but you, you don't have the same level of production. In other words, what I, sh what I should say really is each avenue has its own production costs. You need a designer to design your print piece. You need, a, uh, you need film to be done. Separations have to be done. Printing has to be done. Binding has to be done. And then, of course, uh, sh shipping or mailing has to take place. So on top of the costs of a designer producing this, you have all those additional costs. If you compare that to internet uh, uh, communications, you're going to find that, yeah, you have a, a design that has to take place. You have to have some production that has to take place. But once you have the design and production taken care of, then the only other thing that you really have to do is negotiate for a certain amount of space and a certain amount of time on the internet. So in reality, the cost of internet or online advertising can be quite significantly more efficient than print advertising. So there's something very important for you to think about because th these are the kind of things that you're being asked in, in this week's assignment, or, or I'm sorry, um, discussion and um, assessment. All right, so we're going to talk about online advertising digitally. 
If you see an advertisement via the internet, World Wide Web, then it is classified as online advertising. In fact, there are ads on this very page. There's one right here. And actually, it's quite a beautiful ad. Really nice artwork showing uh, uh, a boat with a beautiful scene. It's, it's really quite nice. And again, this is the kind of thing that you would have been uh, used to seeing maybe 25 years ago. You would have seen this in a magazine. This is the kind of the level, the quality of advertising you would have seen in magazines. Now, I'm not saying that, and this is important for you to understand, I'm not saying that magazine advertisement is dead. It has a very powerful um, competitor today, and that is online advertising. So it's important to understand that all of this plays into your plan. What you're going to do for your assignment is work out a plan of attack for a year to help somebody's agency or somebody's uh, business. There are three. I have information about that. I'm going to talk to you about that in a while. Uh, you're going to come up with a plan to market this particular choice you make um, and pick things that you think will be adv advantageous for the group that you choose to market to. So you're going to be picking a business. You're going to determine a, a group of, um, of advertisers that you are looking to uh, reach out to. And then you're going to determine what would be the best plan for achieving that goal of reaching those people. Uh, all right, so which is the digital variation of old print advertorials, and which that really is. Sponsored content is growing by leaps and bounds from ads on Facebook to Snapchat partnerships with BuzzFeed and Reddit. Fastest, easiest way to reach millions of potential cover, uh, customers is online. And, and that is very true. I mean, this it, it is absolutely clear that while there are an awful lot of people that still are looking at print media, a great deal of what people are doing is looking at um, advertorial online. Cell phone and mobile advertising, relatively new form of advertising compared to the others, but one that's dominating the media mix, uses cell phones, iPads, Kindles, Nooks, and other portable electronic devices with internet connectivity. Current trends in, trends in mobile advertising involve major use of social media such as Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Right now, this is the toughest nut to crack kind of advertising is not only disruptive, but it can leave the customers with a lot of ill will. If you do it, do it right. For a while, native advertising was a good way to get into feed, but now it has come under scrutiny for being deceptive. So go, go back to what we were talking about last night and the idea of deceptive advertising. Don't fall into that pool of people who are going to be doing deceptive advertising. You don't want to do that. You want to avoid that like the plague. The real problem with cell phone and mobile advertising if you take a look, if you take a look at this page, I'm reading an article, and I look over to my. I'm going to open the screen just a little bit more here, and I'm looking over to my right, and here are these two beautiful ads, and I mean they really are beautiful. Look at this one with the whale, beautiful ads. I really like them. Okay, but the thing you have to realize about this is that we're looking at a desktop. I'm actually looking at a laptop. So are you. These images are taking up a percentage of the screen, and they are done in a simplistic manner that enables the person who's designing them to utilize a portion of the screen while not getting in, a way, getting in the way of all the things that we're trying to do here, which, in fact, is to read and understand this article. They're there. And more than likely, nobody's going to miss it because they're so beautifully done. When you have a cell phone or if you're on mobile, like mobile iPads and Kindles, your screen face is much smaller. So what's going to happen is, unlike this where they share the screen, what will have to happen is they're going to have to dominate the screen. And in certain cases, people do not like things to dominate the screen. 
they they don't want that to happen. I mean, if 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 I have this sitting over here, I can still read through it and ignore this if I want. More than likely, I would take a second to look at this because it's so beautifully done. But if I choose not to look at it, I just ignore it. If it comes up on uh, on a cell phone, that's going to come up and it's going to take up the screen, and that is where you run into a problem. So. Really, you know, you have to think about where you're going to advertise and how you're going to advertise. So, you know, again, if you are planning an advertising campaign, I would say that definitely digital advertising, um, a la online advertising, definitely is a good idea. Cell phone advertising, I would probably avoid doing. All right. And then let's go to print advertising. Talk about print advertising. Uh, personally, I have a great deal of experience with print advertising because I started my career in print advertising before there was even com uh, computers. So that's why I can say to you, you know, that, that print advertising, it's still there. The problem with it is it's a, it's a great expense. And I think that if you compared the prices of an adver adver uh, advertisement such as this or this, compared to the same advertisement running in a periodical like this or um, at, at distributed either as a, a brochure, a leaflet, or flyer, you're going to find that the cost of the periodical advertisement and the brochure is going to be a lot more expensive. So again, this is what you have to consider. And uh, so let me let me read a little bit about this. Once a huge driver of sales, print is taking a backseat to many digital forms of advertising now available to marketers. If there's one thing that can be said about advertising is that being different is good. And when consumers tire of digital ads return to printed pieces and tactile feelings and performance they provide is definitely in the cards. Typically, print can be split into three subcategories. So that's a little bit deceptive because I don't really think that things flip-flop back and forth the way they're suggesting they do here. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I definitely believe that um, you're going to find that doing things such as the uh, periodical advertising and whatnot is going to be more expensive, and I think you're going to find that the online advertisements will be more economical. And you're going to get my thinking on this is that if you do it wisely and if you place your advertisements carefully, and again, what you're doing is you're targeting audiences. So what you need to do is you need to, even when you're putting advertisements online, you have to think about the type of online periodicals you're going to put the advertisements in. Because obviously, if you put the advertisements in the wrong periodicals, you get the wrong audience. And the wrong audience is going to Maybe they'll like your ad, but they're not going to respond to your ad. And what you're really looking to do with advertising is, is get a response and get a positive response and develop a customer base or expand a customer base. So it is very important to understand this as you work through the process of putting together your pieces that you're going to suggest in your project for um, development of a um, – a campaign for your the uh, business that you choose. Uh, so periodical advertisements, if it's in a magazine, a newspaper, anything else that comes out at a regular interval, then it's a periodical advertisement, aka a print ad. For decades, print ads were the gold standards for advertising and their clients. To grab the center spread was a big of a big magazine or the back cover meant millions of people were going to see the, the message. When they say to grab it, what they should really be saying is if you are going to spend the money to afford it, you'll get the back cover or you'll get the center spread. A center spread is a huge uh, expense. The back page, a huge expense. They cost tremendous money. So that's why I'm saying if part of your plan is to do advertising this way, you have to consider whether it's wiser to use a periodical, i.e. a magazine newspaper for your advertisement, or are you going to use an online 
advertisement such as what you see over here. And then of course, you have to determine what periodical you'll be using as a basis for this, uh, for this um, article that you're going to do, not article, I'm sorry, but advertisement that you're going to do, what periodical or newspaper, and the same with an online piece. If you're going to be developing an online piece, you really have to determine where you're going to try to place that advertisement. Very critical to think about these things. It's not just such a, I mean, it's not just a question of, all right, I'm going to do an ad for a magazine. That's how a lot of people think it through. But in this particular advanced advertising course, you have to think beyond that. You have to think deeper. That's really what it comes down to, okay? So let's talk about brochures, leaflets, flyers, handouts, and point of sale advertising. Uh, although some of these can be placed within the pages of newspaper and magazines, they are treated as a separate entity, usually because they have less chance of being seen. Now I want to stop for a minute, and I just want you to know that as aside from the, the cost of designing pieces such as this, and then print producing them, which would be four color process printing them, there's also a cost of insertion, what they're talking about here, placed within the pages of newspapers or magazines. There's a cost to just insert that in. And I'm not talking about binding it in, because they don't necessarily bind in. They can, but some of them are just flat inserted into a particular page. And there's a cost for doing that. See, this is the, the thing that I'm trying to explain to you. There's a, there's a cost for everything. And if you're working with a budget, you have to be able to estimate the cost on all these different things and understand what you're going to be spending and how it's going to impact the total amount of money that you have available to you. That's why I say it's, it, it, you're going to find it's probably going to be very viable to be working a lot of this stuff on the internet from something that sits on a counter or customer service desk, a glossy car brochure. This is a more intimate, long form way of engaging a customer. Use this when you have more information than you can cram into a print ad. So if you create a brochure, uh, and I'm talking, in the case of this, we're talking about a counter brochure, which would be essentially, a, um, pretty much would say it would be a trifold brochure. And there are many different types of trifold brochures. But then, of course, when you start talking about many different types of trifold brochures, you're, you're now going to start talking about many different costs for production. So let's just say for our purpose, we're talking about a standard trifold brochure. If you do a trifold brochure, then more than likely, you're going to have to either do one of two things. You're going to have to apply, find some place that has a, a bank uh, in, the, in the area where they have all these brochures, and you'll have to negotiate or get permission to have your piece in amongst that, or you're gonna have to create a stand which is more cost to enable those brochures to be stood up and placed in some kind of a location. So th this is why I'm saying all these things have costs. All these things have to be thought about. That's why when you, when you consider this, consider what you think you can do economically. Direct mail advertising. So uh, either of the techniques mentioned above can be incorporated into direct mail. So let's say, for instance, you make a trifold brochure. You can modify the trifold brochure slightly to produce one that is going to be stood up in the lobby or hotel uh, um, foyer of some, of some place or in the foyer or lobby of some business for that matter. Or that same brochure can have a different back applied to it, uh, a, a different back design applied to it, I should say which would then enable it to be direct mailed. Now, what you have to realize is you have to, you'd have to, in advance, know that you're going to do this, these two different things. You would have to create two different, uh, totally different backs for this. That's the second thing. You'd have to have the production done and a run done for, for each. And then, of course, you'd have to create your, your, bro, your brochure, your trifold stands that would then be used for the lobby or whatever. And then, of course, you would have to have uh, your um, direct mail pieces printed, and you would probably get a, you would probably prepay for a direct mail stamp, which would be a 
particular cost in advance. And then you would have to either have a list or buy a list of people that you would be mailing this to. And everything that I've mentioned right there, and then you'd have to have somebody who would be fulfilling it. You would have to have somebody who would, number one, uh, be the person that would ma do the mailing for you. And they have mail advertising, mail companies, uh, printing advertising mail companies that do this. And of course, if you have return things to it, the return things usually go to the same people who would then bring the information that they, the data that they've collected to you so that you could then process your orders. All of this costs money. This is the point I'm trying to make, and I don't know how much of this you know, but I've had a good bit of experience with all this stuff, so I just want to point out to you that this is what's what you, you'll find will take place. They don't go into, into depth into that to the depth that they need to in the in this particular article but I again I think this gives you a basic idea of some of the things that you can consider uh, let's see what else they say here um, it simply means that your printed piece are mailed directly to con consumer it's a technique that has been and continues to be abused by inferior marketing agencies that have turned the craft into junk mail see this is another problem um, and and you know you can have something that is beautifully designed and it's still a piece of junk because basically they're sending you something that in the end is going to make you very unhappy and and you're gonna either spot it right away or you're going to fall prey to something and once that happens to you you're going to develop a sense of everybody's against me and whenever you get a junk mail or and I'm calling it junk mail but uh, direct mail, you're going to consider it junk mail, and you're going to throw it away. I have it. Ha I've had it happen to me many times. And you know something? Most of the stuff that comes to me, I throw away. There are a few times that I that something will catch my eye, and I'll sit and look at it. Um, and I don't really believe, on a personal level, that I have done anything based on direct mail in a very long time. So I'm I'm not putting it down entirely. I'm just saying to you that it's more complex than just building a trifold brochure. You have to consider how you would distri distribute the trifold brochure. Obviously, trifold brochures can be given to your sales team, and they might have a, a custom back, or even if they just put a label, a specialized label on the back, that the sales team could use that trifold brochure. You could then also create... Uh, these holding stands that you could use to put your uh, trifold brochure in lobbies of places, and then, of course, the direct mail route. Uh, guerrilla advertising, also known as ambient media. Guerrilla advertising or marketing has become prominent over the last 20 years. It's a broadly used term for applying unconventional uh, and usually invites the consumer to participate or interact with the piece in some way. Location is important as in timing. The driving forces behind guerrilla advertising or marketing are the creative ideas and innovation, not a large budget. So here, again, they're talking about budget. The reason they're talking about budget is because budget is absolutely essential. I mean, there are different budgets that you're going to be getting from different companies of different sizes and you as the creative person that you are and we're talking more advertising in general than we are talking about just graphic design in specific as graphic design in specific your goal is to work with people higher up who are dealing with these headaches and they basically come to you and put in your hands the information that you need to produce the thing that they're looking to use and then of course what you do is you interact with them until you get the piece correct and hopefully you can do it quickly enough that you don't make exorbitant costs for them because obviously if your costs get too great they're going to start looking at, at you as a liability because they are working with a budget and I can tell you I don't care how big the company is in the mind of somebody the budget is critical so it's very important to consider this uh, quite often you will ask for forgiveness rather than permit permission with these campaigns and they will be spread via worth of word of mouth and social media so really uh, social media is something that you can use and that's something that uh, you might want to consider as well. I use, I am working with a, a form of social media with John Carino, uh, and I'm going to talk about that later 
And you're going to see different aspects of that through the next three weeks. I'm right now waiting for the final project to complete which is kind of a social media type of uh, project. It's a, uh, well, I'm not going to get into it now, but in the next couple of weeks, I will get into it and I'll explain it in greater detail. And hopefully the uh, production guy will, co will conclude the piece, giving it to me. At that point, I will actually uh, present it to you and you can see what I did. Broadcast advertising, mass marketing form of communications, including radio, and television broadcast advertising has until recently been the most dominant way to reach a large number of consumers broadcast advertising has really taken a beating over the last few years especially with the rise of DVRs and ad skipping technology well DVRs are not so much in my opinion but ad skipping technology definitely is a problem the other problem is that with with the uh, the the um, introduction of cable uh, TV the viewing public mass media who are looking at television and radio have a far greater range of choices making it more difficult for the particular person who is employing uh, broadcast advertising to focus their advertising I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying that it creates a more complex um, thought process to figure out where to place this marketing that you're trying to reach this public. That's the biggest problem. Outdoor advertising. Uh, outdoor advertising, also known as out-of-home advertising, is a broad term that describes any type of advertising that reaches the consumer when he or she is outside of the home. Um, you will know it as billboards, bus, bus shelter posters, fly posters, or even those big digital boards in Times Square. Now, I gotta tell you, to be totally honest with you, where outdoor advertising ex is ex extremely expensive, I think it's a, all, a very powerful media because it's, it's, they're all located in places where population uh, pass. So you have to pay for this, but the bottom line is if, you're, if you create good imagery, if you have uh, the proper um, message, if you come up with something that will work, because remember, these people are all passing, they're all busy, they're not really paying attention, and you need to cap capture their attention. That's really what it is. So the first thing is to capture their attention. The second thing is to make the message so quick that they will look get their attention will be captured and they will immediately understand what you want them to understand if you can do that then billboards or bus shelter posters fly posters um, and digital boards in Times Square well digital boards in Times Square is out of most people's uh, pocketbook I mean there you'll find most of those big digital boards in Times Square is extremely expensive but you know, uh, billboards and bus shelter posters, I think, and posters on subways, uh, I think you're going to find them to be quite a bit more economical. And potentially, uh, because of the nature of the fact that people are constantly passing them, uh, you get a, a pretty good bang for your buck with that. So there's definitely one that I think you would want to consider. Public service advertising, like traditional com commercials, public service advertisements are primarily to, designed to inform or educate rather than sell a product or service. PSAs traditionally appear on TV and radio. They're also heavily promoted online these days. Problem is that more than likely with the particular products that you're going to be dealing with when you're working on your project, I don't know that public service advertisements will apply here. Product placement advertising, in a nutshell, product placement is the promotion of branded goods and services within the context of a movie, a show, rather than an explicit advertisement. I'm sure that you have seen in one place or another uh, where somebody has a Coca-Cola cup. I think they did this. They, they even were complaining about this. I think America's Got Talent. I don't know whether it was Coke or Pepsi, but one of these brands, they, they had cups on in front of everybody 
and they made sure that they had the label turned towards the camera. That's just one example of this kind of thing, and it's huge. So the bottom line is there's something, depending upon your partic particular product, there's something that you might want to consider doing for your company. But of course, what you're going to have to do with this is again, kind of come up with an idea of where, when they talk about context, well, what is the context for you, for your particular um, business, the business that you're choosing? What context? You, you need to know this. It's not just a matter of saying, you know what, I think we're gonna do some product placement. Well, fi fine, well, how are you gonna do it? Where are you gonna do it? Where would, where would you think you would place such a thing that's really what it comes down to and of course you know we're talking about some sort of a, uh, a television kind of a thing and you probably I mean you probably can do it I mean it's, it's probably doable because remember you know these people are t are getting something for nothing and and actually in the end they're not getting something for nothing because there's probably a lot of people that are offering to do this so it all comes down to how good you are with them in terms of what you supply them with uh, let's see what else I say here. Anyone TV show? Okay, so does everyone in this TV show drink Pepsi? They, I was just talking about that. I believe, like I said, I think it was uh, America's Got Talent. They had either Pepsi or Coke. I'm pretty sure it was Pepsi, uh, and that's what they had in front of everybody. So you know, that's what that's what was going on there. All right, so there there is another link for you that gives you some ideas for advertising methods and media medias. I would definitely. Um, have you consider going out and looking for more um, so but this ought to get you started at least now I have this other one here and I think what I'm gonna do is take a look at it real quickly I don't know how much I'm gonna go through it uh, six things from ads that never really happen in real life these ridic ridiculous advertising scenarios don't uh, don't do you recognize so let's see what they say here um, saying brand names out loud repeatedly in real life they say hey pass the ketchup in the commercial hey pass pass the Heinz ketchup so what this is basically doing and I'm not going to go through all of this because I got other things to, to fry here but I think this is probably something that you should come and take a look at not only that but they also have these things here careers creating ads copywriting trends tips business strategies, business campaigns, and public relations. Each one of these things is an article about those particular things. So this particular link, which as I said to you, is in your, um, is in your, uh, where are we at here? Yeah, right there, advertising methods and unrealistic things, there they are. So you have this in announcement so that you can actually go in and take a look at this, okay? Um, the constant parade of immaculate homes. Uh, what they're talking about here is the fact that the places are always spotless. And is that realistic? Are most places spotless? Are most, most places brand new looking? Most of these places are in these advertisements. Very seldom do you see a house that looks like a real house. Food that looks just like a picture. I was moaning and groaning about that last night. The fact that, you know, you take a look at something in the picture, it looks gorgeous. When you open up the box, it doesn't look anything like what you uh, saw in the picture. And you're, so, you're totally disappointed. Uh, parents that are always perfect. A showering as an orgasmic experience. Well, that's a pretty good one. Daily, daily chores are awesome, okay? I mean, people are acting like, you know, this product is just making their life easy. And yeah, I mean, I suppose it does make it better, but you know, how happy can you really be cleaning a bathroom? You know, the bottom line is you do want it to go fast. You do want it to go effortless, effortless, but it is no fun no matter how you look at it. Uh, I blew through them because I also wanted to talk a little bit about this because I think at some point they're going to be talking about different careers. And I think this is, uh, what is this? Is this a video? Oh, hold on, let me see. Advertising is a tough job, but you can make it easier. I didn't look at, oh, what, here we go. This is what I wanted you to see. What is a production director and what do they do? Myths about, creating, of a, a, myths about a career in advertising. I think some of these things are things that you're going to be needing to look at. And there's a bunch of them right here. I'm not going to bother to go through all of them. I'm going to let you do it. But I will go back up here and I'm going to go to creating ads. Because one of the things that you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing some creative thought. 
And the balance, which is what my link that I've given you, has a lot of really helpful information here for you. Um, to switch to mo the switch to mobile is already here. Advertising set impossible standards for women. Uh, examples of brutally honest advertising. How to use Facebook. You can get examples. You can get images out of here. You can do a lot of things that you're going to need to do over the next four weeks. So really, this this entire site, the balance, is very valuable. So I think you should probably uh, check this out. Copywriting. You're going to be doing some copywriting. Here is some examples for you. Five reasons to create an online copywriting portfolio. Step-by-step -step guide to taglines that last decade. These, these people are giving you all sorts of pointers in here that I think will make your job easier if you take a little bit of time and read through some of this stuff. Even if you just go through each one of these things and choose a couple that you think are interesting because there's a bunch of them. Look, we, we continue. They talk about trends, tips. Let's go to uh, business campaigns because one of the things that you're going to be doing, you're going to be creating an ad campaign. And in here, what you have is understanding AID, the four-step four rule of marketing, likelihood of honest, uh, advert honesty in advertising. What do people hate about advertising? What to promote uh, how to promote your business on a dime. Now, there's one right there that you might want to take a look at because part of what I was talking about tonight is the expense that you have to try to factor into coming up with an advertising campaign. You know, somebody is going to say to you, if you go to somebody, you're going to say, well, I have X number of dollars that I want to spend. And you have to make a determination. If you're going to go that route, you're going to have to make a determination whether the number that they're trying to apply to this is realistic or not and if it is realistic how much can you do for them with that money and if it is not realistic you have to do two things you have to have enough guts to go to them and tell them it is not realistic and you have to give them some uh, some research data that would show them why it's not which means essentially you'd have to check with a couple of places to find out what costs are for different things and put together basically a package of things and say, look, this is what you know I've looked at and this is what it's going to cost and you're looking to spend this much. All right? Again, here's the best inexpensive ways to advertise your business. I got to tell you, these are great things. These are, these are very good things to look at. Got a great podcast. Monetize it today. Uh, how to make a viral video. These uh, 10 websites really should reconsider their domain name, your quick and easy guide to understanding. So what I'm saying is the, I've picked this because I find there's an awful lot of value here for you. Um, so uh, again, I, I've given you these links. You can go in there and check them out. So that kind of helps me get you through, number one, the, uh, the first this week's discussion, because this is what you're going to be using as well to get some information about the discussion. This also is going to help you when you start working on your campaign or, or your assignment, okay? So let's see, this is, I'm done with this for now, and I'm done with this for now, and you, the links are here, okay? And I'm done with this, and now what I would like to do very quickly is I wanna get rid of the assessment. The assessment is a, an exam, it's a test. And what it is is it's four questions. This assessment is a little bit deceiving. So I, it kind of confused me a little bit. So what I did was I went in and I got the actual questions that they're going to ask you. And I'm just going to quickly run through those four questions so that you could see what, what they're going to be asking so that you could actually um, prepare yourself to come in and take this test. Let me explain what it's all about, first of all. Uh, for this week's assessment, you'll need to research and answer the following four short essay questions utilizing sources from ProQuest, Linda, and or Google. Um, I have no problem with ProQuest. I have a problem with Linda. I think Linda takes too long. My guess would be that you try ProQuest or Google. Um, and what you need to do is when you go into Google, you need to ask very targeted, specific search criteria questions so that when Google comes up with their list of 20,000 hits, they're going to send you the best ones first. The, the more accurate you are to what you are looking to see, 
the better your search is going to be and the less sites you're going to have to go through to find the answers that you're looking for. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So learning objectives covered compare the difference between traditional advertising, print, outdoor campaigns, TV, radio, to non-traditional advertising, online, social media, electronic publications. Well, you know, I did speak about this last night and I do believe I spoke about it more tonight. So, I mean, here you're going to be literally trying to come up with some of the things that I was just telling you about the differences and similarities between print, outdoor, radio, and social media, which they have their differences and they have their similarities. Research and define five social impacts of advertising. So you should really have no trouble looking up social impacts of advertising. If I were to do this, if I were to have to actually answer that question, I would be just going to Google and saying five, or not even five, just social impacts of advertising. And what would happen is I'd get a ton of sites that will come up and I could look to, through two or three of them and bingo, I would find an entire list of social impacts and just go through them, find five that I like and I would bring them in and uh, then define the concept of integrated band promotion and the role advertising plays in the process. Once again, if you looked up integrated band promotion in advertising, what I would tell you is you would probably get a whole bunch of sites that will come up and give you all kinds of um, information that you could use for that definition of what that is. Um, be careful, read the questions, research the answers to the, four fo to the following four questions. Now, see, this is where you look at this and you say, well, there's three and those are questions. They're not the questions. That's the point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the questions are. Copy and paste the questions into a Word doc. Do your research, write your answers in the Word doc. Then you will have finished copy and paste your answers back into the quiz and submit. You can only take this quiz once. Don't submit until you are finished. So basically I will show you, here's the quiz and I'll show you what, what, what they're asking for. The first question is list three different emotions that can be used in advertising and describe each em how each emotion works to persuade the customers. And now they want you to give a 50 word minimum response. Now we talked about emotions last night and I have links to things in there. So what you could do is you could utilize that. And if you can't find uh, everything in that particular link, you know, I've, I, as I've told you, I did a Google search and had no trouble coming up with it. So you really shouldn't have any trouble coming up with three different emotions. That should be the easy part. Um, and describing how they work shouldn't be too difficult either because as a matter of fact, I believe either I spoke about it or it was written into the uh, definition of what I showed you. The next one, Define print and online advertising and list three advantages and disadvantages of each. Well, guess what? I just talked to you about that. Print, I was talking about the, the difference between print and adverti uh, online advertising. And I mentioned that to you. And I don't know that I actually gave you three advantages and disadvantages, but I gave you at least one or two. And you would have no trouble looking for, uh, uh, if you have to, online uh, print and online advertising or print advertising, dis advantages and disadvantages, and online advertising, advantages and disadvantages. Again, you would get enough articles come up that would give you the information that you're looking for. You write your 50 words, boom, you're done. What is integrated band promotion? I mean, that is the question right there right into Google. What is integrated band promotion? Boom. And what's going to happen? I guarantee you it's going to come up with tons of articles that will talk about IBP. And you will have no trouble coming up with 50 words for that response. Uh, and I'm giving you this in advance so that you could actually do this prior to even going in there. And because uh, it's telling you, you know, you're, it's telling you that you can copy and paste these. So, okay, so here it is. I'm showing you. You write them down and you got them in advance. What role does color and color psychology play in advertising and branding? Uh, you know what? Color and um, advertise color and color psychology. Uh, I may actually, after I get done with this, I may actually ha have another um, site where I can go and show you that. That's a fasc fascinating 
subject, you will have no trouble uh, looking up color psychology in advertising or branding. And you'll have no trouble coming up with that as well. And it is a fascinating uh, topic. And believe me when I tell you, millions of dollars have been spent. Millions, and I mean like, might even be, might even be hundreds of millions have over the years have been spent on color and color psychology studies. It's unbelievable. These people spend tons of money so that they understand how co how color impacts consumer uh, decision making. It's unbelievable. So again, there are the five questions for you. Uh, I wanted you to have them so that you could actually go out and do your 50 word article and uh, bingo bango there it is do me a favor if you take this information from the internet please just don't copy and paste the information take the information utilize the information put it in your own voice write 50 words or more of your of your thoughts based on the information you collect just don't copy and paste stuff in. That's all I ask of you, okay? So that's that. And now, let me just see something here, because while I'm at it, let me see if I can do this. Let's go to here, and let's go to uh, bookmark sidebar, and let me come down to, give me a second. I'm, I'm taking us on a little bit of a, tr little bit of a, a trick that I, or a little bit of a trip that I didn't expect to do. I'm just going to see if I can quickly locate it. I may not, or I may be able to. The psychology of color. Here we go. Here we go. All right. See, I'm glad I did it. There we go. Look at this. I got the psychology of color. I am going to bring up a couple of these things so that you can see this. Let me get another window here. Let's go in and open up the psychology of color. Okay, so here's the psychology of color. All right. Now, this is my initial Google search, and I just wanted to show you. All right. Look at all the look at all of the um, the the um, re responses that I get here. All right. Look, I get twenty two. Uh, good God, what is that? Uh, twenty two thousand. Twenty two million. <laughs> what is that? Twenty two thousand six. I don't know what it is. Well, anyway, there's an awful lot of results here. Look at all this stuff. Okay. The ultimate guide to color meanings. The psychology of color. Color psychology. So really, look. All I did to get us there, the psychology of color. Now, let's see what the first one says here. I'll just quickly look. Um, uh, your connection is not secure. All right, so what's wrong with that? Color psychology and marketing. Let's try that one. Okay, there we go. The know-it-all guide to color psychology in marketing and the best hex, the best hex chart. Okay, now again, here is what I want you to see. This is a blog by Go Schedule, and you are given the, the date, you're given a title, and you are given the author. So if you wanted to use some portion of this, if you were going to come in here and use a small portion of this as a reference to what you're going to write, just do me a favor when you do that, and make sure when you reference something that you, you directly uh, copy what the person is saying and reference it and put your, um, make sure that you add it at the bottom of your page, okay? But anyway, uh, content marketing color is an emotional cue, and an ocean of content marketing color can help yours to stand out. And it just goes on and on. It, now, again, you have the basics of color, uh, color theory, uh, choosing color combinations, understanding contrast of color. Here we get into things like, the psychology of color in marketing, the meanings of color, gender preferences in color, testing your best colors. So there's a ton of this. That's really it. Let's start the basics of color theory. Primary colors, they talk about primary colors, secondary colors, and, and so on and so forth. And this is just one of them. And there are even YouTubes where they actually, you can actually come in here. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. I'm just going to click on it. And again, as I say, I didn't really expect to be here, but I figure, you know what, I'll take a quick look at this. So here we go, psychology, 10 ways colors influence your choices and changes your feelings. So you can see with just this one little link right here, and I'm not even, I don't even have to give you the link. Let me go back. Let me go back. Oop, I went too far back. 
Psychology of Color. There we go. No, there we go. Well, this is ask.com, all right? But basically, I wouldn't do ask.com. I would probably go to Google's, and but you would get the same thing, the psychology of color. It's all you got to do to look this up, okay? So I'm going to ditch out of here. And um, so we're in the assessment. The assessment's done. That's what you're going to do for your assessment. Let's go into our main assignment. Let's go to the assignment. All right, now we'll get serious. And I think I can close this. I'll uh, close that up for now because we're done with it. All right, and let's see here. Our assignment, week one, discussion, week one assignment, creative concepts. Okay, so here's what we're doing. What we're doing basically is that we're going to develop our creative concept. Uh, learning objectives covered, create a year-long advertising campaign that adheres to communicating a client's brand of a campaign concept as determined in a campaign strategy. What does that really mean? It means that you don't think about it in terms of a year. You think about it in terms of a multi-purpose concept, something that you can utilize through different media types. So you're going to incorporate the use of the customer's name, the logo, and the information that, that you are provided with, okay? And let's see here. Let me, let me do this. Let me just stop here for a second and let me do this. Down here, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. There's a campaign, at least one year. This discussion that is. Who I library sources is, is that it? Let me see. No, that's not it. Okay, let me go back. That's not it. Uh, let me go down a little further. Where are you? Okay, the company fact sheets, the logos. Here are the logos, and here are the fact sheets. Now, just so that you understand this, I'm going to come over to here, and I am going to. Oh, you know what? That's not what. That's not it. We go to week two, day two. Here we go. Nope, the wrong one again. DES 470, week one. And uh, let's see here. Uh, final logos. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. These are the logos. So I am going to show you. This is the first logo, Blue Mountain. So there, one of the customer, one of the customers are Blue Mountain. This is one that you're going to choose, okay? Um, here's another one, Discovery Island, and the other one is Red Valley Zoo. Now, I also have in here adonp.com, Advanced Dentistry of New Providence, okay? I've also got Smile Lock by Rodo, and I've also got Strawman, now, why do I have those three? The reason that I have those three is because I am going to be doing something that's almost exactly the same thing that, that you are doing. I have a project that I'm working on, and, and my project is very similar to your project. I'm going to get into greater details later on, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, you, you got – these logos, you're going to use these logos. You, you can't change them, okay? Like ADONP, that's his logo. Those are his colors. I use it that way. If you choose to go with BM logo, that's what the logo looks like. That's how you're going to use it, okay? There are also Adobe Illustrator files for each of these so that you could actually use the Adobe Illustrator file. You do not want to use this for anything. This is just basically a JPEG that you can use to look at. You don't want to use that. What you want to do is if you're going to go with BM, you're going to use BM, and you're going to create your logos from BM. If you have any questions at all on any aspect of working with a logo for any part of your project as far as how you output that that file, how you prepare it for use somewhere, 
feel free to contact me. That's what I'm here for. I, I know exactly what to tell you to do to utilize that logo correctly for any application that you will ha have to use it for. You can call me, you can email me, or what you can do is you can uh, come in on either Wednesday night or uh, Saturday night from uh, 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock Mountain Time, either day, and I will spend whatever time you would need to do with me. Again, I also can be reached by phone. You have my number, and you can send me uh, an email. So I just wanted to show you those things. Those are what you're going to be downloading. You're not going to be downloading Carino or Smilock or Strawman. Those are mine. The reason they're there is I wanted to show you that I'm working on a project very similar to this. And I'm going to be showing you different aspects of that project through the course of the next four weeks so that you can see that I've done something similar. And I have to do things um, the, the way I have to do it. I have nine weeks. I think I showed you this last night. Instead of four weeks to do the entire thing, I have nine weeks to do just one aspect of it and then another nine weeks to do another aspect of it. So I have to do a, a much more expansive uh, uh, presentation of this particular thing. And mine is even more targeted than yours. I'm working on, I'm working on the, the, the redevelopment of three things, a website, uh, a PowerPoint presentation, and a, uh, a video. Uh, an actual recorded presentation. So there's only three things that I'm doing, and I actually have to end up producing these things, um, which I have one done, and I'm the second one I'm coming to the end of, and I hope to be able to show it to you before the end of uh, the course. So again, you'll see more of this come come along as uh, come along as uh, as the course progresses. All right, so let me just go back here for a second because I wanted to also show you. Uh, where was it? Oh, where did I put it? I think it's in here. DES week one. Company fact sheets. Here we go. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to show you very quickly is this. This is the other thing that you'll be downloading. What this does is it gives you some basic information about the particular uh, customer or client. Blue Mountain Ski Resort. And here we go. It's uh, since 1975, Blue Mountain Ski and Summer Resort has provided year-round recreation in the Utah mountains for local and des uh, destination visitors. Known worldwide for its skiing and snowboarding, Blue Mountain offers lodging, dining, as well as summer events and activities. Blue Mountain currently offers skiing, snowboarding, hiking, mountain biking, uh, over 500 acres in the Mineral Basin, uh, based in Utah County. Requests for proposals. Blue Mountain Ski Resort is in need of a full year campaign advertising, not only for its winter and summer events, but its holiday events as well. Please provide a presentation that shows a cohesive campaign throughout all the pieces that you deem best to utilize and showcase these events. So you see what's going on. Basically, they have this set up so it's sort of an open proposal request kind of a thing. Okay, and this basically explains what it is that it wants you to do, all right? And then, of course, it comes over and gives you uh, your year-round events, and these are the things that you need to know about what it's doing. You know that it is going to be uh, in the Mineral Basin, uh, based in Utah County. So Blue Mountains offers lodging and uh, dining. So, in other words, you, you kind of got an idea what it does. You know what you need to do as far as coming up with these proposals, and if you need to look for uh, skiing uh, or um, summer activities in the mineral basis basin of Utah County, my guess would be that you'd probably be able to come up with a bunch of really nice pictures online that you could utilize for your piece. So keep that in mind. That's one. And I'm not going to go into details, great details about all three of these, but it's the same thing. You know, it's a it's an attraction in Florida. It's a, a, a Discovery Island. What is it? Year-round events. Water park. So it's a water park. Okay. So it's a water park. This one might be fun because, again, this is a family-oriented thing. Um, it's a combination of amusement and water park, which they generally all are. Okay. I mean, most of these things are a combination of an amusement and a water park. So you're not looking at something which is such a strange duck. Uh, I don't know whether Discovery Island actually 
exists or not, I, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to look it up and see. Uh, I didn't do that. I didn't even think of doing that. So maybe you do that and see if there actually is something like that. But ultimately, um, what you're going to do is the same thing. You're going to come up with a full year campaign advertising. Now, this is also something that you got got to understand. They got kind of a seasonal marketing, a seasonal market uh, marketing too, because I don't know how they. Um, okay, here we go. Winter fall holiday lights, Polar Express train ride, holiday festival fright nights, and Mardi Gras. So there are your winter fall, summer Fourth of July fireworks, and summer nights concerts. Those are the specials that they do across the summer. So they do have a seasonal. Uh, a change of seasonal venue, or actually it's not venue, but a, a, a activities. So you got to consider that. So there's Discovery Island. That's the second one. And then, of course, the RV fact sheet, events, annual art show party for the planet, Earth Day celebration, adult events, winos for wildlife and zoo brew, holiday events, boo at the zoo, holiday lights, and, of course, you know, educational clubs and other activities. Remember Sunrise and sunset safari, book club, preschool classes, elementary age, so on and so forth. This is in Arizona's Red, Va Red uh, Valley Zoo in Phoenix. I wouldn't, uh, if, I mean, I would go and take a look and see whether or not this actually exists or not. Again, I didn't think to do that. I'm sorry. Um, so, again, this, uh, Red Valley Zoo is in need of a full year campaign. Advertising is uh, not only its winter and summer events, but its holiday events as well. Please provide a presentation that shows a cohesive campaign throughout all pieces you deem best to utilize to showcase these events. The key here is that you are going to come up with a campaign that will give this organization the best bang for their buck. How do you uh, reach the, the people that they would be trying to reach what are the venues that you would use how would you do it or would you be doing trifold brochures would you be doing signage would you be doing um web web ads uh, you have to make a determination of how you would put together a package billboards you know what are the most logical things for this particular venue and where perhaps would you uh, be marketing these things. If you're online, what, where would you put them? Where, where do you think would be the best place that you would um, find that, that you could actually place this stuff? Okay, so you got two things. You're going to download them, and I've downloaded them so I could just give you a look at them. All right, so let's get back to this, and let's see what we got to do here. All right, so um, creative concept, learning objectives covered. Create a year-long advertising campaign that adheres to communicating a client's brand of the campaign concept as determined in the co company strategy. So first thing that you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to come up with a, an overall campaign and perhaps some sort of a marketing tagline that, that identifies the overall brand. Then what you have to do is you have to think of the secondary uh, um, campaign strategies, which are the special events and the special um, ev the special events that they have. You have to think about that on a secondary level. But on the, on the overall level, you need to come up with an, some sort of an advertising campaign that that is supported by um, probably some sort of a tagline. That that's one of the things that you're going to want to do. Again. Define a target audience. Very important. Each one of these um, concepts or each one of these advertising campaigns must define must be defined to a specific audience. There's got to be somebody. Who are those people that are going to be interested in your particular campaign the, or your particular uh, customer? Uh, you're going to do some research to develop a concept to create a cohesive multi-part campaign strategy. And again, the, the thing that I would do is I would think big first. I would think overall first, and I would come up with an overall, uh, an overarching uh, campaign that would have some sort of a tagline. And that tagline should be something broad enough to cover all the different individual things that you are going to be doing aside from the, uh, the business itself. 
interpret and utilize at least three advanced advertising strategies for an effective design campaign. And what that basically means is we talked about strategies. Each one of those three would, each one of those um, customers or, cons uh, you know, um, businesses would probably be best served by particular strategies. So, and it doesn't have to be one strategy. It can be more than one strategy or it can be one strategy. It's totally up to you to decide what strategy or strategies you're going to use. Again, it's up to you, you decide, you come up with it. Uh, communicate advertising design ideas and visual concept in writing and presentation. So what you're gonna wanna do, like I said, you're gonna wanna come up with some design ideas, visual concepts, and some writing. And basically, what I would try to do is I'd try to think in terms of some sort of a marketing tagline, some sort of a marketing um, a message, very important thing, uh, and keeping, really, to go back to this for one second, if you look, all right, Let's just open up, let's say we'll open up this guy here, Discovery Island. Okay, so we have Discovery Island here. So basically, you know, you've got Discovery Island. That's the logo. You're not going to do anything with that logo. You're not going to mess with that logo. What you're going to do is you're going to find something to support that logo. What about Discovery Island? What can you say about Discovery Island? That's what's the most important thing. What can you say about it? I, I have, let's see if I can find this thing here. Give me one second because I'm also now doing something a little off the cuff here. When I was working with John Carino, let's see if I can even find this thing. Uh, where were you? Maybe it was on here. Somewhere I have it. The, let me see if I can find it. When we were working on his piece, I'm not finding it here. Okay, I'm not finding it right now. Uh, the art and science of a smile. So let me let me go back, let me go back then to John Carino. And there, there's a reason I'm doing this. Go back to company fact sheets and let me open up. Whoops, no, I'm sorry. Let me go back to the logos. Wrong place. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna give you an idea what I'm talking about here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, final logos. There we go. Okay, A D O N P. All right, so A D O N P. Is, is no different, ADNP is no different than Discovery, that the, the ones that you have, okay? ADONP, Advanced Dentistry of New Providence. Uh, the art and science of the smile. So when I'm talking about coming up with an appropriate tagline, John and I, John Carino, who is the owner of ADONP, and I came up with the art and science of of the smile. And that is what he will now be using for everything that he that he does. So again, I'm, I'm just pointing this out to you because this is part of what I'd like you to try to do. Come up with something like that. It's not impossible to do. It just takes some thought and maybe even do some research and to, into, you know, creating taglines or branding themes. Look, look up that as well as Google and it'll give you some ideas. Okay. So, an advertising campaign is a series of advertising design pieces that are distributed over a variety of mediums, TV, print, online, etc., which share a single idea and a theme to communicate, and there again, very important, a single idea and a theme. So, really, even though that you're, they're asking you to come up with a number of different things for the court, through the course of a year, which has seasonal activities and stuff like that, there should be an overarching theme. And that should be singular and always present. It probably is in a, in, in a branding of colors, uh, overall branding of colors, uh, the use of a, of a singular theme like I, the art and science of a smile, okay, something like that, which appears no matter what, right, as a branding tagline. You might do the same thing for your particular customer. And then, of course, what you're going to do is you're going to apply these basic singular thoughts to the... Uh, designs that you create for your different seasonal activities. And what you're going to do is show a couple of different applications of these things 
with the seasonal activities. You might have an advertisement for something that's going on in the summer months. You might have a web design, a web ad design for something that's happening at, say, th um, uh, uh, what's a Halloween, okay? Uh, or a Christmas event, something like that. Maybe some kind of a, um, a TV spot for, for something like that. So, uh, okay, random message. Campaigns run for a specific time frame. Well, again, the reason that they're talking about a year is because if you go back to what they're saying, they have different seasons. They got a summer, a, a spring and summer, winter and a fall and winter, and they have different activities, summer, spring, fall, and winter. So what they're looking for is they're looking for something that is uh, overarching or overreaching for the entire um, brand and the entire uh, concept, and then what you're going to do is apply several different seasonal activities within that context. And of course, you can modify certain colors, just don't modify the brand colors. It's never a good idea. I'll go back to what I was saying before, come back here, go to week one, and let's go to final logos, and let me open up ADONP. You know, as much as I might not like that blue and I might not agree with that gray, those are the colors that John has chosen for Advanced Dentistry of New Providence. And as a graphic designer, I have nothing but respect for him and for his choices and for what he does. So I, as a designer, I'm not going to go in there and suggest that he change things. I think basically we leave things the way they are. And then we just basically work from there. And at some point in the, in the next week or so, maybe uh, probably sometime next week, I'm going to begin to show you some of the work that I did for him. John, what he does is uh, he's a, a, a dental, a um, actually um, uh, an, a, an orthodontist, and, and he does very elaborate uh, dental reconstruction. And I mean some of the most unbelievable stuff. I mean – it, this, the, some of his case studies are enough to make your skin crawl, these poor people, what they go through. You'll see some of it. I'll show you some of it. Not because I want to shock you, but just to give you an idea, when you're working with something like this, you work with what they do, and you create for what they do. John is very proud of what he does, and I can see why. I mean, some of the people that he works for have had such horrible things happen to them, and he actually gives their life, he gives them their life back to some degree. So you have to, you have to really respect that, and uh, you have to look at what he does, and you have to come up with something that's beautiful for that. And I would say that you would do the very same thing with your customer. Come up with something that really gives the person who might be considering a vacation, gives them the, 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 the motivation to, to perhaps try this particular place. All right. So this module will be creating a multi-part campaign that spans over a year. One of the following clients, Blue Mountain Ski Resort, Discovery Island Amusement Park, and Red Valley Zoo. You will create a multiple delivery specific to seasonal events as described in the, in the description below. Now, just so that you understand, major difference between what I did in my master's program and what you're doing here is I didn't have to do exactly the same thing that you were doing, but I had to create, I had to create a new product. I had to come up with a new product for an existing product. So what we did for John was uh, we, we redid his, his, um, his website because he had, he, well, you'll see, I'm not going to go into detail. We, re, we did his, redid his website. I designed his, his uh, PowerPoint presentation. I had received a critique from somebody who he was working with, and we redesigned his uh, PowerPoint presentation based on a critique that we got. And then I decided that what we were going to do is we were going to do a live recording of John's presentation, which would then be put into his website, and it would be placed at, at different uh, strategic places online. Now, the major difference really is that uh, I had to choose my own, whereas you're actually given three. You have three here. You have a choice of either the Blue Mountain Sky Resort, Discovery Island uh, Amusement Park, or Red Valley Zoo. I didn't get that. I, I was given nothing. I was just basically said, you find somebody. You pick somebody. And it just 
happened to me that I was working with John and we had discussed the pot potential of redesigning his website. We uh, were working on PowerPoints together and we were about to redesign his power. So that just kind of fell right into my lap and it became a perfect choice for me. Okay. So I mentioned that because I'm hoping that by me showing you and going through some of the things I did with John, it may help you learn a little bit better about what you're doing here. For this assignment, the student will choose one of the provided clients, research and develop a concept for a multi-level campaign. Uh, look at, and again, what I really am thinking you should do is think about it, think about the, the whole picture first. P what is the big picture first? The big picture is the, the, the business itself. Let me go back and let me choose one of the others. Go back in here and choose one of them so that I can talk a little bit about this. Final logos. Let's go in. Let's grab this time uh, the BM logo. Okay, so we have the BM logo here, right? Okay, so basically you got BM here, all right? And let me come over and let me make this a little bit smaller so I can move this over a bit. All right, so you got Blue Mountain. Um, there we go. Develop a concept for a multi-level campaign. So what I would do, first of all, I would be thinking about the Blue Mountain Ski Resort as a total package. What is it? What can I say? What is, what is my, for Blue Mountain, what is my, the art and science of a smile? That, that's what you have to think about. What can I say about Blue Mountain Ski Resort? What do you want to say about it? What is it that, that makes it unique? What is it that you can use to identify Blue Mountain and make something special of it? Um, things go better with Coke. There's another one. When you, when you think of Coca-Cola, I'm sure you've heard that. Things go better with Coke. I don't think they use that anymore, but it is one that they did use. So really what you're doing is you're coming up with some kind of a tagline for this. Think big first. And once you develop something that gives you some basis for uniformity, then you can go in and you can start thinking multi-level, which means essentially seasonal and activity-based, okay? You can start talking about what they do there, when they do it, and you can group things up. Like maybe what you could do is you could create a piece for the uh, spring, summer, Maybe you could then produce a piece for the fall and the winter. And now what you've done is you've kind of, uh, you know, tied the two together. Then you can do uh, smaller pieces that, that sort of springboard off of that, where in, this, in the winter you can focus on one particular activity, or the fall, let's say, uh, Halloween. If they have a Halloween event, well, you could, you could focus on something like Halloween and have pictures of what would happen in the Halloween and a description of what would be happening in the Halloween. So that's basically what you're doing. Um, from, for, from your campaign development research, include the following, a minimum 300 word uh, describing the direction your camp, uh, of your campaign and what your creative concepts will be. Include advanced advertising strategies. Uh, you're gonna research and do some citations with this. You will at least discuss, if not completely identify, a tar target audience. You need to understand who you're dealing with. You have to think about who they're dealing with. Um, identify which event is used for each deliverable. Deliverable. So that's why I was saying, after you create something which encompasses the whole, then you can start thinking seasonally, okay? A, a design variation that would work seasonally, and then, of course, in that, you would then have something even more specific to a particular event. Like I was saying, you know, fall and winter, that one. And then you're going to go down one step to fall, uh, Halloween, or winter, Christmas, that kind of a thing. A campaign slogan. Well, you know what? It says here, one for each seasonal event. That You could do that, or what you could do is, and what I might think you might, what I think might be better is for you to do one major slogan and then do something more along the lines of a headline for each particular event. If you have some kind of event, have some sort of special thought that you would use for event. They're calling it a slogan, campaign slogan. My, I, my concept of a campaign slogan is what I did for John uh, Carino, the art and science of a smile. That's a campaign slogan. So you would come up with something for Blue Mountain, and then what you would do is, 
have some sort of a, a theme tagline for each seasonal event, okay? I think that's stating it a little more correct than what they have here as a campaign slogan. There's two different things. Like really, the campaign slogan, in my opinion, the art and science of a smile is what I used for John. That's something like what you're, what you're going to do with, uh, with this particular thing. And then, of course, you're going to come up with something else, you know, for each particular seasonal event. Let's see what else we got here. What is provided? Uh, you have a ski and summer resort, amusement park, and a zoo to choose from. You've got a company logo. You've seen them. Brief uh, fact sheet. List of seasons. Yep. List of events. And as, okay, well, so basically you'll download them. I download them. You shouldn't have any problem downloading them. I tried downloading them. I got them. So I'm telling you right now, you shouldn't have any trouble with that. Uh, so what you're going to do further is use the existing company logo provided. You cannot change or alter the logo in any way. You know, th this stands to reason. The bottom line is that this logo represents a logo that they would have. You are being supplied this logo in any kind of a branding environment. The, the company usually has branding colors. They have branding um, identifiers, which would be a logo in this case. And you don't change them you, unless you're at being asked to redesign them, which is not really what's happening here. So you can utilize these things, but you must utilize them the way that they come. What you need to understand is they supplied you with a JPEG, which I don't want you to use for anything other than to just look at it like I'm doing. They've given you a vector file. They've given you an Adobe Illustrator vector file. What I want you to do, and what I'm more than happy to do uh, next week, is I will show you how to utilize that logo to uh, create, because uh, I want to get through this this week, but next week I will open up one of those logos, and I will go over that logo in depth, giving you an idea of how you can modify that logo uh, as per the kind of file formats you would probably need to produce certain things. I have to look at the next three weeks to find out exactly how you're going to be producing this stuff. That will give me a better idea of what I need to show you as far as setting up the, uh, the logos so that they can be utilized in the media presentation pieces that you're going to produce. I will show you th all of that. But keep in mind that you've got an Adobe Illustrator file. That Adobe Illustrator file, once you choose Blue Mountain or whatever one you choose, you're going to be using that particular logo and you're going to be creating different variations of images that are going to be used in different uh, pieces that you create. Keep that logo intact and don't modify the color and don't modify the text in it. And again, I, I'm going to go over all of that probably next week. I'll go through the lo one of the logos very extensively to give you a pretty good idea of everything that's going to happen with that. And you should have no trouble once we do that. The other thing, too, is you know where to find me. I've made it clear to you. you can come see me anytime you want. We'll discuss it further. Uh, so what else here? Uh, in week two, the client will add a surprise deliverable that will be added to the season that in week two, let's see, uh, so that, let me see, assign the deliverables below to the season events. Okay, so what they're saying is assign the deliverables below to seasonal events. So they want you to do an EPUB ad, which they will probably give you specifics on, a YouTube commercial uh, for week three, which means essentially a YouTube commercial, what I believe it's going to be, uh, I don't know whether it's going to be live or not. I'm going to have to read that. I'm going to have to read and see what that YouTube commercial actually is. I haven't read that far into it yet. Uh, an outdoor campaign, a bus wrap. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to create a bus wrap. Basically you're going to create a piece of art that's going to wrap around the body of a bus. Um, something that you should have very little trouble doing in Adobe Photoshop, and again, I can help you with that. That will not be a problem. Uh, I probably will be able to help you with the EPUB ad. That's no problem. The YouTube commercial, I'm not exactly sure what that is yet, so I would have to uh, take a look at that to find out exactly what that entails, but more than likely, it shouldn't be too much of a, a big deal. Uh, and then, of course, it's saying here, in week two, the client will add a surprise deliverable that will be added to the season that has 
to the season that has one deliverable. So essentially, I guess they're they're going to be applying each one of these to one particular season, I guess. And then on week two, they're going to do a second one for one of them. That's how I'm interpreting this at this point. But to submit, this document, when finished, should be professionally laid out and include not only the designer's info, you, but the client's logo as well. Use your imagination. You can create here for what you create here for the general layout will be used in your final presentation uh, package for week four. All right, so listen, the deal is when you do this, you're going to lay out uh, a number of, um, I, I guess, number of pages. Let's see, this is a document when finished will be professionally laid out and include not only designer's information, you but the client's logo as well. Use your imagination to create here for general layouts. You, what you create here for this general layouts will be used in your final presentation report. It should be exciting to develop. All right, so there, I guess, I guess what you're going to be doing is a series of pages. I guess that's what it is. It's a little bit unclear there what that is. I would think that more than likely what you would do, if you kind of look at what they're saying here, this document when finished will be professionally laid out and include designer's information and the company logo. I would imagine that would be page one. And then perhaps on page two would be your example of your EPUB ad. Your YouTube commercial would be a page. Your outdoor advertising piece would be a page. And then, of course, you also got a second piece, which will be a surprise deliverable. That would be a page. So I'm guessing that we're looking at like maybe four or five different pages here. That's what it looks like to me at this point. Okay? Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically that. And then, of course, it tells you how to name it and everything which you should know right now. So, okay, so that's basically the assignment. Now, what I did, all right, let me get that out of here. Now, let me get that out of here for now. And let me get that out of here. So what I did to kind of uh, finish us off for the night is I have uh, some stuff that I did for John. What I created, and remember now, here's what you have to understand. Whereas you have four weeks to do this whole thing, I had 16 weeks. And actually, 16 weeks is a whole lot more difficult than four weeks because there was a whole lot more expected of me uh, from week to week as opposed to four weeks. I, I had to come up with a great deal more information and it was a lot more specifically directed that, in other words, I, each week I was producing 600, you're, you're producing this week a 300 word document about what you're going to do. I had to produce a 600 word and I have a create, here's my creative challenge and then I had to analyze the website. I, and these are just a few that I picked so that I could show you and I'll show you a few more. The creative brief for advanced dentistry and what I gave to John, which is a design document questionnaire. I'm going to uh, show you these and I'll explain them a little bit better as we go through. So I picked four of these things to show you this week. These are for the earlier ones. Uh, so I thought I would give you some idea of what I had to do with this. And again, you're going to be doing something similar, but you're going to uh, be doing it with a lot less intensive uh, uh, research and study. All right, so my creative challenge. Here's my creative challenge. Uh, define the creative challenge. Advanced Dentistry of New, of New Providence. Dr. John Carino is a graduate of the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey where he received his doctorate in dental medical degree in 18, or 1985. He then continued his dental education with postgraduate specialty training in prosthodontics at Emory University School of Dentistry in Atlanta, Georgia. After becoming a prosthodontist in, eight, in 1987, he then went on to the Harvard University School of Dentistry for an additional two more years to achieve his certif certif certificate of dental implantology. In addition to all his dental degrees and citations, he holds two masters of science degree in both biology and human nutrition from the University of Bridgeport. Dr. Carino has earned his undergraduate bachelor's degree in both biology and general science from Villanova University in 1981. Not only is he a very well-educated man and a gentleman, but he's a wonderful person. Uh, if everybody I knew in my life was as nice as John, I'd have a much happier life all over great guy. 
Advanced Dentistry of New Providence has a very comprehensive home site with listings for patient information covering such aspects as first visit, new patient, financial insurance, and home care, just to name a few. The site also offers comprehensive listings in treatments, cosmetic, and dental health. There is about us and reference library pages complete with patient information that includes customer flyers and referring doctors. So again, I'm basically just putting together my proposal based on an explanation of who he is, what he's doing, why is this something that I need to be working on. Again, my, my instructor, before he would actually accept this proposal, had to be sold on it. So that's basically what I'm doing. You're doing something similar in that you're going to be coming up with a presentation concept for somebody who, like John, is considering giving you a job. Now, I already was working with John and this was something that I had to do for the school, and it worked out perfectly because John and I are doing this anyway. All right, so in the words of Dr. Uh, Carino, Bill, I am very impressed with your body of work. Um, the reason he's saying this is I've worked with him for a year before this began to happen. In his, uh, I helped develop his PowerPoint presentations, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit more later on, but John and I had history. Uh, advanced dentistry works hard to sort the relevant from the irrelevant and to respond appropriately. It's the goal of advanced dis dentistry to foster productive communication through the use of every available technique. Great point. The goal of advanced dentistry is to foster productive communication through the use of every available technique. So basically, you know, he's talking about uh, a, a multi-platform or a multimedia uh, approach to uh, marketing uh, advanced dentistry. Our goal for social media is to be well engaged with the customer. And again, he, he relies heavily on social media, which I would say something you would think about too, um, really, Kimberly. Social media is probably uh, going to be very powerful if you think about it the right way. That's my opinion. Um, set the proper environment for a positive brand experience. Back to me. In support of their primary website, Advanced Dentistry can be found by searching Angie's List. So this gives you an idea of some of the potential things that you can suggest. This is why I'm showing you this. If you look at what I'm doing here, you can suggest some of these things for your client. Like for instance, Angie's List, Yelp, About Me, Business Finder, New Jersey. In this case, it would be Business Finder, wherever your state is. Uh, Foursquare, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and even the yellow pages, okay? These are things that you could also incorporate into your campaign. According to John, this is again John's word, advanced dentistry is always eager to develop conversation as well as demonstrate the techniques that make advanced dentistry what it is. So really what you want to do is you want to develop conversations. That's what your goal is. You want to get your customer to develop conversations. So think about that when you actually put together your multi-tiered uh, advertising campaign. The idea of recording live lectures and distributing them online is both logical and exciting. The reason he mentioned that is because that, that is the project this is my announcement to my instructor that this is the project that I'm going to undertake for my uh, for my final senior or my final um, master's degree program. We're actually in the process of recording that. Well, we've actually recorded it, and what's happening right now is I have an editor who's compiling it. I hope to have that complete before the end of this course so I could show it to you. It's a 45-minute presentation, so it's going to take a little bit of time to do that, but I will show it to you uh, when I get it, because I think it'll be worth it. At any rate, again, to go back to what I'm saying, right here, this one statement right there is what this entire paper is all about. The rest of it is just a buildup and a massaging of the rationale of why I want to do this. That That's what this is all about, and this is what you need to do. You need to think about, what do I got to say? to make these people believe that I can do this and they should want to do it with me. That, that's where you want to try to go with this, okay? And you can do it. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm no genius. So now back to me. 
Dr. Carino realizes that to promote the skills that make advanced dentistry what it is, he must continually look for ways to evolve. John recently attended a website seminar for prosthodontists to discuss, oh, the discussion turned to social media and how it is moving away from the written word to content recording and video streaming of content. This is another big point. This is something that happened to John that he let me in on. The fact that after he spent all this time and energy on this website, and his website's actually pretty nice. I mean, it's not the best website I've ever seen, but it's a, a, a nice, solid, well-designed and working very well website. The problem is that it's now becoming dated because it's all basically static information. And what this, this website seminar for prosthodontists was talking about was the fact that now in social media, they are beginning to uh, gravitate towards content recording and video streaming content, all of which supports the idea of what I was coming up with, with the idea of recording live lectures and distributing them online and both exciting and logical. That That's basically you know, a, another a way of supporting my contention that the project should be this recording of the, John and I had talked about doing this. We had never done it. What I did strategically was I turned it into an assignment that I had to do. And John being more than just a client, being a friend, wanting to do this, now realized that he had to do it because he needed to do it for me for my master's degree. So that gave, gave him the little bit of extra push that he needed to actually make it happen. So now this thing is actually happening. And when he sees it, I think he's going to discover a whole new world for him. And that's basically what people like us do. We, we, we come up with these ideas and we present them to people and we get them to do it. And they're surprised by what they get. And then, of course, from there we go on to do greater things with these people. Uh, so here, John stated that people want to hear my voice, listen to my passion about what I do, and get to know me before they meet me. What he's saying there basically is he he does these regular presentations to dental groups, and they are basically PowerPoint presentations of his case studies. And I've been helping him to develop PowerPoint presentations for over a year. And at first, I was going about it in a very laid back and very I shouldn't laid back's not the right word. I was doing it in a very understated way because of the nature of what John does. And I was thinking that I was being smart because I didn't want to create a circus look around these very severe and sometimes almost ghastly uh, uh, things that John has to, to do. Uh, but then it turns out that I was wrong thinking on that and a certain amount of uh, high tech and and uh, presence building graphics made our site looks much better. You're going to see. I'll get into this. I don't want to get into it here, but you'll see where my thinking evolved and how it evolved. And this whole thing has paid off tremendously, both for John and myself. So Dr. Carino regularly provides uh, professional lectures on product and technical advances as they occur within the industry. John's heavyweight promotions are his lectures. D delivered with the support of PowerPoint presentations. So just to reiterate what I was saying, John does the promotions. I do the PowerPoint presentations. I actually prepare for him. And his presentations usually are anywhere from between 180 to 250 slides. So th these are gigantic presentations that usually run anywhere from uh, one to two and a half hours. Uh, okay, so each one running approximately an hour or so. Um, one major limitation has been that the live lectures are currently available to but a few, but, to but a small and select audience for a limited time only, meaning essentially that, you know, he'll have a group of 35 um, dental people and he'll give that lecture to them and boom, it's done. That's it. It's in the air. It doesn't have any life beyond that. He has to go on to the next um, the next lecture, and he has to give that lecture live. The challenge to Dr. Crino in 2017 is to produce and deliver a series of these lectures recorded live with Camtasia. So essentially, by recording them, and actually originally I was going to do it in Camtasia, it turned out that I was able to get involved in this, uh, a professional videographer and um, 
uh, production manager when it comes to the actual uh, assembly of the final product, which is our video, uh, using um, Premiere. So this has gone from being one level to a much higher level. Uh, then provided on an advanced dentistry YouTube website. So at that time, we were talking about definitely uh, creating a YouTube website. And of course, the other thing we would do is we would modify and extend his, uh, his website. So we'd have a video site, YouTube video site, and his website would have a new page that would have his videos associated with it. Uh, to better assess the viewing flow and establish a greater level of interaction, advanced dentistry will likely employ a passport environment for the YouTube web page. So here's the deal. He doesn't want this to be uh, open to the public. What he wants is he wants to have a certain measure of control over this. So in order to access the YouTube web page, which is very simple to do, you would have to have some sort of a special code that would enable you to get into this area of the YouTube site that he has for it to see the entire video. And what we would do is we would create sort of like uh, clips, the very same kind of clips that they have for major movies. They would basically be like, let's say in one of his presentation, he has 10 different case studies that he's going over that all are interrelated by perhaps they're all using Strawman devices. So what he would do is he would take one and he would do an extraction from the major uh, recording of the one uh, clip, the one, it's make a clip out of one case. And that would be uh, in, a, in a local or an open YouTube area where anybody could come in and take a look at it. So let's say you're a dentist and, you know, you want to take a look at the major piece of this work. And before you actually contact John Carino to get access to the link, you take a look at this YouTube page, you take a look at that case study, you like the case study, you understand it's going to help you, you then contact John who will then give you access to the major um, uh, presentation. Now he does these presentations continually and he probably changes these presentations, I would say maybe at least once a year. So, and, and what he'll do is on, on occasion he will modify I think I think I've modified presentations for him. So today it's only it's only July right now. From January to July, I've modified presentations no less than three times. So we're talking about modifying with him three of them, and then of course at some point, maybe in a year or so, we may actually create an entirely brand new one. Now you all well, I don't want to get into other things yet. So I'll, let me end it there. But we'll, there's more I'll talk about later. Um, when asked, John said, the quality and content of my pr presentation build brand recognition, not only from Dr. Buzz, but from the standpoint of the implant manufacturer as well. What he's talking about is the fact that doctors are the people that he presents to. Implant manufacturers are the people that produce the implant material that he uses in his practice. Uh, earlier before, I showed you the pictures of Strawman and, uh, go back to it here, uh, final logos, I got uh, Smile Lock and Strawman. Both Strawman and Smile Lock make these devices for implant technology. And he does presents their, he does work with their product and he presents case studies based on the implementation of their product. So that's what he's talking there. The editability of these recorded lectures assist the staff of the advanced dentistry and will also expand the value of advanced dentistry outposts and social networks. So what we're talking about with outposts and social networks, when he has his regular site, that's his home site, home base. Uh, a YouTube would be a social network or an outpost. YouTube is an outpost site. It's another site outside of his uh, normal website. Uh, his Yelp site, all those different uh, sites that we talked about earlier up there would be his social networking sites. So again, what they would do ultimately is they would be set to, so they would point back to the uh, YouTube site so that people could take a look at the videos. They would also be pointed back towards his home, uh, home page, his website, so that they would go back there. So that's what we're talking about there. Um, while the majority of his recorded presentation will reside on the YouTube site, there will be uh, direct 
links or embeds to other posts and likely the establishment of a new page in his home site. Again, this is all just what I had to produce to get my, my, my uh, professor to say to me, okay, this is a worthwhile final project. I mean, this is a final project for a master's degree. So, I mean, what you have to understand is that, I mean, I have to really, I have to really have something that looks like it's a value or he's going to say, ah, it's not good enough. You have to do something. So I'm painting a really deep picture with this. I'm showing you this because I want you to understand the level that I went to do this. You don't have to go to that level, but I would like you to go to enough of a level that you come up with something really good. For me, no. For you, this is for you. Now, why I'm showing you this is because this is what I had to do for me. I'm saying that this is something that you consider doing for you. You do the best you can with it. And, I mean, I went and did the research on this, and, and it, it's not as hard as you think. It's just really a matter of, of coming up with a really good idea and putting together uh, a presentation that will sell that idea. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, so John is working for the correct blend of social customer channel participation and organic growth. The goal of advanced dentistry is to deliver a rich user experience and obtain a unified understanding of the, cus the consumer at every touch point through his organization. John Carino is busy refining his vision for advanced dentistry. When John's work is complete, advanced dentistry will have an improved rich media home site, strong output, a YouTube with passport account, all of which will provide a rich and efficient, efficient customer uh, listening environment. All right, so there it is, and it comes out to 777 words. That's what I came up with here. Now, in this particular case, you'll notice that I don't have any citations or referencing down here. The reason that is is because I was using referencing I was referencing John Carino verbatim. In other words, John and I sat down and we had this long conversation. I'm going to show you two more pages in a minute of, of information that I worked out with John. Again, I'm, I'm able to sit down with somebody. That, that's why this was such a wonderful thing for me to be able to do. Because unlike you, where you actually don't have somebody, I can sit, you can make something like this up. You can sit down and make up this. I mean, if I didn't have John, if I was doing something where I wasn't actually working on a project with somebody I could sit down with, I would sit down myself and I'd make it up. I mean, you could do that. I, I mean, it's just, I, the only reason I didn't have to do it was because I, this is a real project. And this is what I told my instructor. It's a real project. And he was like, well, you uh, write it up and if it uh, sells me, you're off to the races. And uh, I sold it, and we're off to the races. I'm working on it right now. All right, so there is no citation or referencing on this particular one because I was directly referencing John, and I noticed that I made a mistake here. If you take a look at this, this is supposed to be italic. See that? Made a little bit of an error there, but no big deal. All right, so there's that. Now, what I want to do is show you the other things that I did, analyzing the website. Now this is another this is another document. I think this is actually let me see if this is part of what I used the other from. Hold on, let me get this out of here. Let's see what we got here. Come in here and let's take a look. All right. I am I'm very impressed with your body of work analyzing my website. My website designer is pbhs.com. So bear bear in mind, I am not designing his website. I am working in the same way that you're working. I am basically working to produce for him, go back to the assignment, okay? Uh, I am creating a creative concept. My creative concept is to move John away from static graphics into um, streaming graphics. So that's what I'm trying to get him to do. That's my goal. My goal is to not become his uh, his website guy. He's got a perfectly good website guy. Just like when I told him I wanted to uh, create his video uh, for him. I, initially, I was going to do it because I had to do it because we didn't have somebody who was going to do it. It turns out in the end, we were able to get somebody very talented to join us. He's going to do it, so that's off of my plate. But I do create his PowerPoint presentations for him. So you see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm delegating stuff. And in reality, you would probably delegate stuff too. So don't feel that in the end, you know, you would have to produce all this stuff. What you're going to produce is you're going to produce a selling document. You're going to produce a document that sells your concept. That's what you're doing. 
okay? And I just want to make that clear to you so that you understand exactly what you're trying to do here. You want nice visuals. You want a solid idea. You want something that people are going to say, yep, this is what I want to do, and I think I want to do it with this person. This person sounds like they know what they're doing. That's what the goal is. And that's the reason I'm showing you all this stuff, not to bore the heck out of you, okay? Um, all right, so my website designer is P pbhs.com, and they are endorsed by my specialty, the American College of Prostodontics, or ACP for short. Um, it is through them that I was able to pick a website template and alter the content pages to fit my needs. So he basically used a template that existed. One of the things that he would probably do if he would redesign uh, the site, which he's going to do at some point based on our conversations, is we would probably modify his template so that it became uh, consistent with the templates that we created for his PowerPoint presentation and his video. Uh, and you'll see that when I show you them later on next couple of weeks. All right, so uh, to meet the demands of my patients and their needs, my website is constantly evolving. You know what? Uh, streaming content, patients want to, I don't want to read this again to you waste your time because we read all this, but this is basically John's rough information to me that I used for his uh, document. So let me get out of here. Um, let me go to creative brief. Okay, so creative brief. So here's the creative brief. I did this creative brief. Basically, the creative brief, brief is for John Carino, DMD, uh, MS, Advanced Dentistry, and there's his website, http, www.adonp.com, there's phone number, project, seminar recording, YouTube site creation, date, and whatnot. Project team, who will be working on the project? Initially, the team leader would have been project manager John Carino. I would, I would have him basically as my project manager. Design and production, William Sweeney. Now, what happened is John, Car John Carino ended up not being, this is, this is at the beginning of my, um, my uh, you know, when I first initially submitted this, this project. After I submitted the project, I had to put together this creative brief. The creative brief basically gives um, an outline, so to speak, of what it is that I'm going to do specifically. So what I'm saying to you is that team leader, I, I assigned team leader, project manager, John Carino. Uh, it really was me, but I didn't want to be me, um, uh, team leader, and because he is really the team leader in a way, because he's the, the principal. Design and production, Bill Sweeney. So ultimately, what now has occurred is John has no longer is no longer the project manager. I'm the project manager, and we have um, someone by the name of Lewis. I can't think of his last name now. Lewis, um, oh, his last name forget uh, escapes me right this second. He's design and production. So I I've, I've basically. Uh, changed to be the project manager. The reason I don't change this is because, as you can see, this was done in uh, April. So, I mean, I'm just leaving this alone because I want to show you what I did at the time to produce this. All right, so assignment. What are the deliverables? What I'm doing now is I'm basically putting together this creative brief telling what I intend to do and what, I, what they can expect out of me. All right? Uh, initially, Bill Sweeney will record John Carino with Camtasia delivering one of his presentations. The presentation will be cleaned up, modified, creating one complete recorded or live presentation file and a currently undecided number of clips extracted from the main recording. Essentially, we're going to do one uh, complete recording of his entire presentation. And as I say to you, his presentation is made up of a number of sort of strung together cases that all revolve around a similar approach to his um, uh, prosthet prosthetic prosthesis work with a particular um, uh, organization in mind, either uh, Strawman uh, or Rotomedical. Uh, what we would do is we would pull out and do an extraction clip, which we would then uh, put out in social media. media. The uh, full clip would not be out on uh, it would be in a private area that somebody would have to actually gain access to through uh, direct contact with John Carino, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, the clips will be utilized on social media for doc Dr. Carino to promote his seminars. Dr. Carino 
will at that time decide if you will produce a YouTube site area where, where his presentations will be housed and offered by invitation only. Program background. What is the history of the client supporting this argument? Dr. John is a graduate. Well, we went through that, so I'm not going to read it again. Villanova, blah, blah, blah. You, you've heard that already. Uh, objective. What is your purpose? What are we trying to accomplish with this? Uh, our combined goal is to maximize the value and usage of his presentations and to generate segment teasers to be used as vehicles to promote his fuser presentation. So my, you might consider an objective when you, when you put together your creative uh, scenario with your assignment. What is your purpose? What are you trying to achieve overall? That's something that you might do. And then look, I even have a tar target audience identified. So I see why I'm, I'm showing you this. I'm showing you this because even though this is done in several documents, this is the kind of thing that, that you will be doing in one document. I had to go through a number of documents to do this. You do not. So I'm showing you some of the things that I did, hoping that it will help you to put together yours. The presentations are directed to both dental professionals and the student alike. So... You know, he shows his presentations to dental students all over and dental professionals. There are dental clubs. There are professionals that, that have these dental clubs that meet and they go over different things. And he is a presenter that brings in his case studies. He's very advanced um, a prosthodontist. The, pre uh, the presentations offer a dental professional a comprehensive look into the advanced techniques utilized by Dr. Carino and also introduce some of the resources, Strawman, Okay, remember, Strawman and Roto Medical, currently available to the dental professional. Uh, John is the only person in the state of New Jersey currently who is working with Roto Medical. And they gave him 18 months head start before they even attempt to sell it in the state. John goes and uses these materials, creates case studies, and then produces these um uh, he will now be producing videos, but he also produces these PowerPoint presentations and goes and presents them to dental people who take orders on Roto Medical. He he generally he generally gets around twelve thousand dollars worth of orders every time he has a show. He's had a number of shows, and and it, it's roughly rounded out to around twelve thousand dollars per night uh, that he's getting for people who are putting in orders on this stuff which isn't bad because you consider it's a two hours. Secondarily, our secondary target, Dr. John lectures are directed to dental students currently working towards degrees in dental medicine and the instructors teaching the discipline. So basically what he's doing is he's going to these new students that are coming this way and showing them some things that they may not have access to seeing any other way. Tone and matter. Uh, Adjectives used to describe the service, helpful, friendly, generous, open, professional, and comprehensive, all of which they are and John is. Uh, work scope, what is, required, what is required for this project? PowerPoint of a presentation as chosen by Dr. Carino, a live reading and recording in Camtasia, which no longer happened. It actually occurred in, no, I'm sorry, it did occur in Camtasia. It is going in Camtasia, but it is being edited, not in Camtasia. It's being edited in um, um, uh, Premiere. Uh, edited and segmented by Bill Sweeney with Camtasia. Again, that's changed. Lewis is doing it in Premiere. With a final output of web-ready MP4 files for uplink to YouTube. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you that before the end of this course. Content and fuck. Functionality, what is the required functionality? One complete presentation of used as a master for generating the clips for upload to YouTube. Creation of MP4 files for several segments or clips of the main pro production file for upload to supporting media such as YouTube, website, Angie, Yelp, About Me, Business Finder, and so on and so forth. Platform accessibility, the internet. Creative considerations, what what should be considered when developing this piece? How can Dr. Carino realize a maximum benefit from his creative effort? And what can be done to expand avenues of opportunity for a presentation access of his business? How can Dr. Carino build a larger community of interest party interested in taking advantage of his time and effort? I think that's pretty much it. Yes, it is. And again, you'll notice that there's no citation on this particular thing because all of this is basically 
questions that I had to respond to by myself. And what I'm saying to you is where you don't have to use every single thing that's in here, there might be room for you to use a few of these particular questions uh, in, in your creative brief that you create. I, I'm trying to show you things that I hope will help you. That's why I'm showing you this stuff. Now, I, we're actually out of time now. I, there was one more thing that I really would love to show you. And what I think I'll do is uh, I'll show you this next week. All right. Basically, what it is is a design document questionnaire. And what I did was I created a generic design document questionnaire. And I, whenever I work with a client on any particular thing or it's a new client, I give them this. And what it does is it asks them questions. And I think there's like 20 questions. There's 21 questions that I ask them. And they give me information on this. I'll tell you what I'll do if you'd like. I will uh, put one more, um, I'll put one more announcement. And I will attach this as an announcement that you can go and take a look at. Because in here, it's an interesting thing that I do. It basically are generic questions that might help me come up with some leads as to what I can do to make these this particular presentation work for him. So I'll make sure I put that in there for you. Uh, one more thing before I go, we're done for tonight. One more thing I wanted to remind you is I will be at, uh, I will be in Blackboard tomorrow night from um, seven o'clock until 11 o'clock mountain time. Uh, if you'd like to come and see me, I'd love to see you and talk to you. If you have any questions or anything, or if you would like to talk to me about this, uh, maybe get better feedback uh, about a particular thing, you know, don't hesitate to come in. I'll be more than happy to spend the time that you need with me. I also can be reached by phone. You know that. And you also can send me an email. So uh, that's it for tonight. I'll see you next week. I also will be available uh, Saturday night from 7 to 11 Mountain Time in Blackboard as well. Uh, good luck and don't hesitate to get in touch with me if you need anything at all. Thanks.